What is going to happen according to the end time prophecy? The Holy Bible consists of 66 books divided into two distinct sections, 39 books in the Old Testament and 27 in the New Testament. However, in all 66 books, there is no other book like the book of Revelation. Today, many see Revelation as one of the most debated, intricate, and misinterpreted books in the New Testament. Given its intricate nature, it's not surprising that the early church had mixed feelings about its inclusion. No other book faced as much opposition for inclusion in the scripture canon as the book of Revelation did. Yet, there's a unique blessing associated only with the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 1 verse 3 states, Blessed is he that reads, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. The book of Revelation is undeniable. As time progresses, it becomes more apparent that we are moving closer to the events of the book of Revelation. And there is only one question that is appropriate to ask you. As the book of Revelation is about to unfold before your eyes, are you ready? Are you ready for the throne room of heaven to witness the living creatures, each having six wings, that do not rest day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come? Are you ready for the Lamb to take the scroll and begin to open the seals, marking the commencement of the judgment of God? Are you ready for the four horsemen of the apocalypse to make their cosmic descent upon the earth, a rider on a black horse, a rider on a white horse, a rider on a pale horse, and a rider on a red horse? Are you ready for the sixth seal to be opened and for the cosmic disturbance, for the sun to become black and the moon to turn to blood, and for the stars of heaven to fall to the earth? Are you ready for the 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel to be sealed? Are you ready for the prelude to the seven trumpets, where there will be 30 minutes of silence in heaven, the only time recorded in the Bible where this will happen? All heaven will be in silence for about half an hour, complete and utter silence, 30 minutes of anticipation, as the wrath of God is about to be unleashed without limit. During those 30 minutes, every angel and every saint that has ever lived will be in awe of what is about to happen. All the innumerable number of angels and the saints of God that are now in heaven will all be silent for half an hour. Why? Because the trumpets are about to be sounded. And then, finally, Revelation chapter 8, verses 2 to 6. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with the fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. And the seven angels will sound their trumpets one by one, and each trumpet is associated with a major event. This is why all of heaven is silent. Heaven knows what the seven trumpets mean. For instance, the fifth trumpet will be the release of the locusts from the bottomless pit. Are you ready for the seven angels with seven trumpets to sound? Are you ready for the first trumpet to sound where the vegetation will be struck? Are you ready for the second, third, fourth trumpet to sound, and to hear an angel flying through the midst of heaven saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of the remaining blasts of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound. Are you ready for the angel that will open the bottomless pit and allow Abaddon, Napoleon the destroyer, to ascend onto the earth with his locusts? Are you ready for the angels from the Euphrates River to be released? Are you ready for the arrival of the two witnesses, for them to preach, then to be martyred, and then for them to resurrect and ascend to heaven in a cloud? Are you ready for the rise of the Antichrist and the mark of the beast? Are you ready for the three angels to be sent down to the earth to preach the gospel? Are you ready for the seven bowls of judgment? Are you ready for the heavens to open to see a rider on a white horse? And the rider on that horse is none other than Jesus? His eyes will be like a flame of fire. 
Are you ready for the new heaven and the new earth? Are you ready to see the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband? The Bible and Jesus informed us that a great tribulation will occur on earth, unparalleled in history. The Antichrist will rise to power. The onset of the Great Tribulation isn't marked by the rapture, but rather when the Antichrist signs a seven-year covenant with Israel. However, he will break this covenant midway. Daniel chapter 9 verse 27 provides further insight. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. The Antichrist will commit the abomination of desolation and erect an image of himself for worship. Those present during the tribulation should be alert, understanding that this event signals the onset of the worst three and a half years of the tribulation period. With the return of the Lord Jesus imminent, the Antichrist will mandate the worship of the beast, making existence unbearable for those refusing the mark of the beast or its worship. Revelation chapter 13 verses 16 to 17 states, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Throughout the Great Tribulation, the four horsemen of the Apocalypse will act on earth. Additionally, the seven seals of God will be unveiled, God's seven trumpets will sound, and his seven bowls of wrath will be poured onto earth's inhabitants. As each seal was broken, John witnessed earthbound events. With the first seals opening, John saw the first horseman on a white horse, armed with a bow and crowned. He was empowered to conquer the world. The second seal revealed a rider on a red horse, armed with a large sword and the power to remove peace from the earth. Upon the third seal breaking, John observed the black horse, its rider holding scales with a command to spill the oil and wine. A pale horse appeared with the fourth seal opening, its rider being death with hell trailing behind. Death was authorized to eliminate a quarter of the world's population through various means. After the fifth seal's unveiling, John saw the souls of martyred saints who had been persecuted for upholding God's word and testimony. They were clothed in white robes, waiting for the remaining believers on earth to endure a similar fate. The opening of the sixth seal caused a great earthquake on earth. The sun became as black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. The stars of heaven fell from their heights, and there was such a tremendous shaking of the heavens and the earth that even heaven seemed to fold up. At this juncture, the inhabitants of the earth began to seek refuge. Revelation chapter 6, verses 16 to 17 states, And said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come, and who can withstand it? All these events are but a glimpse of what will transpire on earth when the seven trumpets sound and the seven bowls of God's wrath are poured out upon the land. Revelation chapter 19 verse 11 reads, And I saw heaven opened, and behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he does judge. After the great tribulation, Christ will return in his magnificence to vanquish the Antichrist and his forces, casting them into the lake of fire. The second coming of Christ will starkly contrast with his initial arrival. In his first appearance, Christ came as a sacrificial lamb for the sins of humanity. However, upon his second coming, he will return as a ruling king with all of his majesty and great glory. Christ will be accompanied by the heavenly host. Jude chapter 1 verses 14 to 15 states, And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. 
the prophecy of Enoch, the seventh from Adam, and the prophecy of John the Revelator, all align to tell us of the second coming of the Lord Jesus and his saints. Who is this one that is described as coming with all his saints? He is unveiled in the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 1 verse 1 states, The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants. The entire Bible reveals Jesus Christ to us, but no book presents him as vividly as the book of Revelation does. In the book of Revelation, the Lord Jesus Christ wants his church to recognize him. The only pathway to the Father is through him. If one approaches through any other means, they enter as a thief and a robber. The Lord Jesus is depicted in the book of Revelation. He is disclosed in Revelation chapter 1 verse 18, which says, I am the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and Hades. He is the ascended king, the living entity. He is no longer arriving as an infant. He is not on the cross anymore, and he is not in the tomb. He is the vibrant being who possesses the keys to death and Hades, the omnipotent one. Revelation chapter 19 verse 15 proclaims, And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, with which he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Eventually God's wrath will be appeased once his judgment and justice are manifested on earth. Christ will assemble the remnants of his followers, and together they shall reign for a millennium. The rapture is real, as are heaven, hell, the great tribulation, and Christ's second coming. If the trumpet were to sound this instant, are you certain you wouldn't be left behind? What is holding you back from being united with Christ? It's crucial to address it now and set your course straight with the Lord. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Amen.